Grimes has an amazing story. I think the part that amazes me is that she could sing the national anthem before Dallas Cowboys football games when she was only 10. But Leanne Rimes was never an ordinary girl. She learned to sing and dance almost before she was able to walk and talk. Margaret Leanne Rimes has literally grown up in front of our eyes. She was thrust into the national spotlight at age eight after winning the junior vocalist competition on the television show Star Search. By 13, she had a record contract and a hit single, Blue. It went platinum eight times over and earned her two Grammys along the way. One of those for best new artist marked the first time a country singer had ever captured that honor. So what's a 14-year-old to do next? Do Leanne's 1998 mega hit, How Do I Live, went on to become the biggest crossover hit of all time, rocketing to the top of not just the country music charts, but the pop charts as well. Shame on you if you fool me once. Shame on me if you fool me twice. This showbiz veteran has recorded 10 albums and has sold over 27 million. Amazing. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I'm too old to be such a big fan, but I, if oh, I no, could do that, please. that blue, that, will you crack it? How do you do that? Are you, are you wanting me to do that? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I'll bet, I'll bet there are any number of people here who, well, you know, I, I, I can sing, I can kind of sing, <laughs> but there, there are the little things like that that are the difference between I can sing and I can make uh, 100,000 people pay <laughs> tickets to hear me do that. <laughs> well, thank you. No, yeah. it's, it's something I've been blessed with a gift. I've, ever since you saw, ever since I was a baby, I was singing. And um, there is a difference. I don't really think you can teach anyone how to sing. You know, you, you, there's people that are tone deaf. So you can't teach pitch. Uh, there's people, you just can't teach phrasing. You can't teach soul. You can't. You know, there's something that it's just a gift people are given. Yeah, we got a picture I want people to to look at. Picture of of Lee and Ooh, so cute. How old are how how old do you think you are there? Probably two or three. Two or oh, three. I love that haircut, Mom. And that thanks. that little, <laughs> little two or three year old girl can sing. Let's listen. particular interest, I guess, in, in how you grew up and became the person you are. I have a girl about your age. Oh, really? Yeah, and she can sing, too. Oh, cool. Oh, but... You know, I, um, I was born in Mississippi, and you, that was actually my grandmother that was sitting there, um, and that was at their house when I was probably two or three years old. And then I, I moved to Garland, Texas when I was six. So, are you from Texas? I hear Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and um, I grew up there, and um, my dad was a seismic supply salesman, and my mom worked odd jobs. I never grew up around a lot of money. My dad and my mom both just, you know, freely just gave me their time, you know, and really supported everything that I did. When they discovered that, that you could sing, was it obvious early that you could really sing, that there was something special here? Um, you know, I, I didn't really feel any different from most kids until I was probably about eight years old. And I would sing at, at Opry's around Texas, and I would see other kids my age sing, and it just wasn't quite the same. And um, I started to realize that I, I really did have this talent. Um, and I, I knew at five, I, my mom and dad told me that I, I knew at five years old I wanted to sing, and I, I was going to be a singer, and I told them this. And they were never pushy parents. They just, they really did 
they encouraged obviously you know the talent that I had but um, never pushed me into it I was a very pushy child they I didn't wanted... slow you down no 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 they never obviously, obviously not <laughs> oh. obviously not um, I think at one point you know when my when everything was really blown up and, and huge and I was in a whirlwind of success around 15 I think my mom wanted to slow it down a little bit she was losing her little girl to the rest of the world so I know it was really hard for my mom at one time she... but um, as a kid no and I think it was just kind of pursuing my dream and and no one really knew what was going to come of it. What if, question, what if you had gotten that part that you auditioned for in Annie 2? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, my first love is actually theater and Broadway. Really? And it was kind of funny because my, my mom always said, well, you know, we're, we live in Texas. Maybe if you, um, if you sing country music, that'll get you there one day. You know, just kind of taking a different avenue. Um, and my, my godmother um, had heard of these auditions, and I came up to New York when I was six, and um, they had they tried out, they had auditioned, and these, all of these girls all over the United States had you know, auditioned for Annie, and they were down to the top ten. And um, I walked, I knew, you know, we didn't even think I was going to be able to get in because they had narrowed it down already. And I was tap dancing outside, um, and I was the only one there for Annie. And I was tap dancing and singing because I was bored and we'd waited two hours. And they walked down and they said, who's tap dancing? And my mom said, my daughter, and I'll, I'll make her stop. They're like, no, no, bring her in. <laughs> Please bring her in. So I, I did my little tap dance number and sang tomorrow. And um, I ha killed and happy, and happy yeah. birthday. They wanted me to sing happy birthday. And I, I remember what came out of my mouth. And my mom just like looked at me like this. It what was, came out of your it mouth? Was like, I just did this like big version. It was like, happy birthday to you. I mean like, <laughs> my mom's like, you don't sing like that, you know, happy birthday. And um, they just, I, would, I made the top 11. So, um, and they thought, and I'm glad my mom did what she did. They thought I was too young. And I, you know, it was a, it was a big show to carry. And um, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I waited. But I, something, I, a dream of mine is to do theater and, and Broadway one day. Um, before you were 16, I've read, you had done more than 500 appearances. Yes. I was, I did 500 shows in three and a half years from the that, time I was 13. That's got to <laughs> have a, that's got to have a downside. Very much. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I burnt myself out. Um, and, you know, it was, it was a very tough job to have at 13. Can we talk about that yeah, in a moment? absolutely. Well, we will <laughs> when we come back. I wanted my dad there, and that was, I think, the main thing was I wanted my dad to be my dad, my mom to be my mom, and stay out of my business. Um, and it wasn't trying to fight for my independence. It was just I wanted my parents back. Sometimes success can be overwhelming, and Leanne Rimes has certainly had a lot of that. Growing up in the spotlight can sometimes be a blessing. By your own account, you'd had a hard life. I've had it, uh, you know, all the bad things and all the hardships that I've gone through have made me really, really strong, and, and that's the good part of it. But, yeah, I mean, I missed out on my childhood a lot. I mean, I missed out on normal things. But for me, that was the norm, you know, to, to sing. Um, but, you know, I always say I traded the Grammys and I you know, traded, you know, the, sc the school and the prom for the Grammys, which was uh, totally fine with me. You know, we were talking about 500 appearances in, in three and a half years, which is a kind of pressure that, that I didn't think about, but how many people are you responsible for in that sense? Um, at one time, I think there was about, you know, 68 seven, to 75 people on tour with us. Um, you know, and it's also when your mom and dad um, both give up their jobs to help you, there's also a sense of, um, you know, the whole family is depending on you at that time, and then everyone else's family. You know, my bass player's family and the production guy's family. I mean, and you every, were aware of that. Um, I wasn't until about 16. After all of these shows, after I'd, you know, I'd had to cancel like five shows at one time because I had a larynx infection. And um, I was given steroids at one time to, um, you know, to bring down the swelling so I could sing the next day. And, um, you know, it's things that people don't see like that that take a toll on you. Um, I had, uh, I was diagnosed with Epstein-Barr at one time. Um, so I was really just kind of worn out. And, and at, by 16, I just sat down and realized, wow, all these people are depending on me. And if I don't go on stage tonight, I'm out money. You know, they're, they're out money. <laughs> they don't have, you know, and their families are suffering. And um, all my family was suffering too, you know. So uh, 
it was definitely a tough, tough thing. And a tough decision also to decide to stop and take a break. How long was your break? Um, I had a good two years of just doing a few things here and there, but trying to be as normal yeah. as possible, just to like, just to go buy groceries and, you know, mm -hmm. it's the little things, just to wash clothes, even though I don't do that very often now. <laughs> <laughs> um, just like normal, normal things. It was really nice. There were highly publicized difficulties in your family uh, and even lawsuits. Mm -hmm. um, how did you find your way back to each other? Um, I think that's what I mean when, when my family was taking a toll. To, it was taking a toll on my family. Um, you know, my, my dad, my mom and dad got a divorce when I was 14, and um, my dad remarried, and um, my mom remarried, which is, uh, love, love my mom's husband, and my dad is, is now divorced and um, has a great, great girlfriend. So, um, and we're all like, we're all very close now, and I think sometimes it takes these bumps that you just, you know, and, you, and some of the fights, and you just have to get it out. Um, and there was a lot of, I think, pinned up frustration and, and just things that were going on that we re really didn't talk about. So um, then came the lawsuit, and then it was over, <laughs> thank God, in like two and a half, three years. And um, it took a long time, and it was over the, the week before my husband and I got married. And um, I wanted my dad there. And that was, I think, the main thing was I wanted my dad to be my dad, my mom to be my mom, and stay out of my business. Um, and it wasn't trying to, you know, um, trying to fight for my independence. It was just, I wanted my parents back. So um, it was very hard, but it was really, it, it, we've come to such a great place now that if that wouldn't have happened, we wouldn't probably have the relationship we do now. Um, I've got a great family. It's a lot easier to, to just be very honest about my life, and I'm in a really happy place. I think the, the um, odds that uh, you would have been uh, a 14-year-old superstar and would still be uh, riding very high at the age of 22 are almost as high as the odds of a 14-year-old winning two Grammys. Yeah. So somehow you've, you've uh, pulled it off. You've, uh, you've made it to the other side and as an adult have a career ahead of you. Um, Leanne you. recorded uh, How Do I Live? I can't, this is, was hard for me to believe. Six mm -hmm. years ago, I know. it was a monster hit I and it remains so and she's going to perform it for us now.
Phelps. He put his number and said, keep in touch if you ever need anything. So it was, it was very sweet, but it, um, it was very, it was very good. So I did, I did call. And I didn't return it. That was the funny part. <laughs> So this segment, we get to talk about love. Love, okay. When I was a little girl, I had a fantasy boyfriend. And do you know what his name was? What? Dean. And I married him, didn't you I? You married <laughs> Dean. You married Dean. I Dean Shermay, let's have a, 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 an applause. Yeah. For... <laughs> so Dean, how did you introduce yourself to Leanne Rhymes? <laughs> It's funny, we actually met through a mutual friend at a party before we re-met, I guess. And um, I walked up to her when we were working together and I said, hey, how, how you doing? I see you. And she's like, hi, it's nice to meet you. So obviously I wasn't that memorable the first <laughs> time. No. He was. I turned around to my friend that was with me and it was actually her birthday party we met at. And I said, Dad, I met him before. She's like, yes. He's like, great. I believe that one. Of course one. I said, it was nice to meet you. And uh, yeah. shrugged off. He was off. very sweet. Then, <laughs> well, then you must have been pretty memorable. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, he was very memorable. Actually, um, I was hosting the Academy of Country Music Awards, and he was actually working with me on there. And um, I was freaked out because I was singing and dancing and hosting that night. And um, he came up to me and he said, you know, this is your night. Don't let anyone take it away from you. And I was like, oh, that is sweet of him. <laughs> and um, he, um, he made me laugh the whole time, so he kept my nerves from, like, you know, get, taking a toll on me. But um, he actually gave me a card that night, and it, it was the sweet thing about how he, it was really smooth, actually. He said, <laughs> it, was, it was like how he loved to work with me and um, how excited he was to do that. And he put his number and said, keep in touch if you ever need anything. So it was, it was very sweet, but it, um, it, was very, it was very good. So I did, I did call. Uh -huh. I well, did call. When did you, you did call? Oh, yes. You she, did call? Oh, yes. Yes. She, she yes. needed something. Well, how quickly did you? <laughs> Call. I made that call, what, a couple days after, actually. <laughs> and I didn't return it. That was the funny part. <laughs> no, but it wasn't, it was, it wasn't on purpose. I, I, I'd gone to Michigan. It was funny because I, I was torn between taking the job and not taking the job. My friends were like, we're going to go on a road trip from L.A. to Detroit because that's where I'm from. You're a dancer. Oh, uh, yes. From I, Michigan. Yes. Okay. And, um, Just background. And so I was going to take a road trip with the guys, and I was like, no, I really want to take this job. And... I ended up coming out of it, yeah. I guess. <laughs> it was a good job to take. Okay, this is kind of a quick courtship. Yes, very. How quick? Um, we were together three weeks before we were engaged. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that an engagement? This would be it. Oh, and he, he, can you hold that still? I, I know we're going we're gonna to burn the lens out of the camera if you sparkle it too much. He was telling my friend, he's like, I love her so much. I can't, we're going to get married one day. And I was like, what? You know, and we both didn't know, like, if we were serious or not yet. And um, he proposed um, later on that night in front of our fireplace, and it was lit, and it was perfect, and he didn't have a ring, and it was just. But he was on his knee. But he was on his knee. He got <laughs> down on his knee. And he was very traditional. Yeah. It was very sweet. Dean, how did you know? That's kind of risky, I think. Did, how did you know she'd say yes? I didn't know. That was probably the, it's so weird, you know, when you're younger, you, you go, okay, I'm going to be on a mountaintop or a hot air balloon, and you, you get all these perfect, I'm going to have the ring, and everything's going to be perfect, and none of that happened, and that, it couldn't have been any better. It was just one of those natural things, spur of the moment, I got down on my knee, and I said, Margaret Leanne Rhymes, will you be with me forever? Oh, he is so sweet. Oh. And Margaret Leanne Rhymes was then 19. I was then 19, yes, ma'am. So you're now 22. You've got, so you've got some history. I was actually then 18. I just she was, it was 18. No, <laughs> <laughs> it was actually two months before my 19th birthday. You're leading such a sped up life. It's, I, I, I felt, you know, it was kind of weird because I, I did, I was afraid to tell my mom because I'm like, my mom's going to freak out. And um, she loved, she fell in love with Dean. My whole family did. So I was really kind of freaked out that everyone would say, well, you're, you're too young. Not once did we get that from anyone who knew us, which was so nice. I just, I've grown up so fast and I was at a different point in my life at 19 than most kids and to have, and we, I was still a kid and we just, I've had the most amazing marriage for the last two and a half years. I mean, I highly recommend it to anyone. <laughs>
<laughs> to anyone who's ready. Yeah, a little bit later in the program, are you going to let us take a little peek at your your new house? I'm not oh, going to yes. show you that, but okay. I will announce that it has five bedrooms. Yes, it's so beautiful. We're so, so are fortunate. you expecting company? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> company. The family will be coming in on Thanksgiving. Yes. And exactly. Just, uh, <laughs> You want kids? Oh, we definitely want kids. I mean, I'm into writing children's books and everything. I love kids. We talk about it every day, and um, and it's very hard, I think, not to at the moment. But um, we... well, as long as you're not talking about it every night. Then... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leanne has a new single, uh, "Nothing But Love Makes Sense." It's already climbing the charts, and she's going to sing it for us next. <laughs> Ryan's upcoming album makes a statement about coming of age. This woman is what it's called, and she sings the first single from it now, Nothing About Love Makes Sense. Come on, everybody, get up and dance. tour of her home away from home. Next. I love my bus. All right, guys, let's come on in. Let's show you the bus. This is the main part of the bus where we do a lot of hanging. We do some cooking here. This is my favorite as we've said, Leanne was born in Mississippi, grew up in Texas, has lived in L.A. for five years, but recently she and her husband, Dean, chose Nashville uh, to put down some roots. Yes. Maybe mm -hmm. they have you a keep family. Saying, mm -hmm. I keep waiting for you to, you know, break the news, you know. No. Leanne Rhymes said on the Jane Pauley show uh, today, that's my favorite. You know what? Thing. It would be a great place to do that if it was true, but it's not. It's not true. <laughs> um, but, but you and Dean do have a huge family already. I think you're already a family of 
13. Yes, including us, there's seven dogs and four cats. <laughs> <laughs> so we have we have a big family already, but um, there, we, there's some there, of them. There's seven dogs. That's all them. Yeah. Some are little. They and are. They, what we is have, big? Um, three Pomeranians, two Chihuahuas, a Boston Terrier, and a German Shepherd. I want to see some pictures of your house, okay. if you wouldn't mind, and tell me about how you how you. Uh, oh wait a minute. Here it's Leanne, ready for casual entertaining. Absolutely. <laughs> a heart. Darling. And then Dean cooks. Dean cooks, yes. As yes. you see in our kitchen, Look at him we don't always do that in our kitchen. But, um, <laughs> but um, he does. He does cook. And, That's um, all we do in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna go to the bedroom now. Okay. <laughs> There's the bedroom. Ooh, glamorous. Aww. I just love it. It's so. It's just so cozy, and it's um, you know, it just it really has a lot of our personality and everything. There is a. a Painting somewhere on the wall in there that Actually, I've heard about. Yes. Behind our bed. And, and what is the what is it you say, Dean? There's a painting behind our bed, and it was actually something we acquired on a we we're on vacation in Hawaii, and it's a painting of two people dancing. At first look, it looks like a two people dancing, and then you get closer and it reveals it's a change purse, and the people's arms become the change purse, and there's money in between the two people, and it's torn. So it's kind of like our little credo is to never let the money come between the relationship. Oh, yeah. So it hangs over our bed. That was very important for me. I think that was really something that really we like, we set straight right at the beginning. Um, with especially with all the stuff I'd been through and lawsuits and stuff, it was There's one promise I made. Yeah, <laughs> it's and um, it was just a, it was a cool thing. And well, you, you can't take the house on the road with you, and you no. do spend a lot of your life on the road. Yes, so I when do. Leanne and Dean are not at home. Their home, away from home, is the tour bus, and Leanne has been nice enough to give us a tour inside. Yes. My bus. I love my bus. Sounds like my dog. I'm not really a big flashy bus kind of person. Uh, it just needs to be comfortable. We've got to slide out in the front, which means that when we pull into a venue, usually we can slide out the front, which gives us a ton of more room. We're always working, always on tour, always on bus, and it's my home away from home. All right, guys, let's come on in. Let's show you the bus. This is the main part of the bus where we do a lot of hanging. We do some cooking here. We have actual hot plate. Will you do some cooking? Well, Dean does some cooking. My husband and I just moved to Nashville about a year and a half ago, and I've seen more of the bus than I've seen my house, so that explains how much we're on the road. <laughs> you always want to see what's in the fridge, right? So we have Coke. We have water, we have dog food, we have beer. I can actually say we have beer now. I'm old enough. I'm old enough to say that now. <laughs> this is the bathroom. This is my favorite part because I love the shower. I don't have to usually go into many hotel rooms because I just love my shower so much. I have a little L over there. How cute. I'm very girly, I guess. <laughs> Back here, this is where I get dressed for my shows. I've got the vanity area. I have my travel journal keeping a lot of stuff from receipts to movie tickets to everything we can possibly keep on the uh, road to, um, to put like on website and to share a little bit of the tour with my fans. This is our bed. This is the um, most comfortable thing in the world. <laughs> when I'm on tour, this is where I bed. Say hi. She has no clue what's going on. Come here, Freshie. Come here. So, thanks for coming on the bus. Thank you. That, that wasn't the German Shepherd. No, no, not at all. No. Do you know what I find most amazing about that bus of yours is your vanity. You have a tiny little vanity dresser, and I think that says a lot about Leanne Rhymes. Oh, thank you. I, you know, I have, um, I have a wonderful makeup artist that travels with me, and I am the worst because I hate sitting and having my hair and makeup done. When I'm off the road, I go without any makeup on. I mean, I, you know, Dean sees me dressed up all the time, so when we're at home, it's like pajamas and nothing. <laughs> so it's nice. It is. I just, I love being beautiful as part of my job. I have so much fun with it, but I also like being just normal. <laughs> I'm glad to know that. Yeah. As much a thrill as it is having Leanne perform just for us, and another song is upcoming, but imagine finding her on stage in your own backyard. Next. <laughs> Good 
this button right here. Okay. And you can play in front of a live audience. Oh my God! Leanne's private side and have enjoyed her public side, but there's another side to her life off stage, and that's her commitment to her fans. Leanne recently surprised a family of serious country music fans on the hit show Extreme Makeover Home Edition, and they were moved to tears, but so was she. Hit this button right here. Okay. And you can play in front of a live audience. Oh my God! See her there was enough. Leanne Rhymes coming to our home. That was like one of the greatest experiences. Amazing grace, Superstar being so sweet and humble and sharing this amazing moment with our family and it was so heartfelt. You could tell her heart was really there with us. made such an impact on me that day. They were so cool. Aww. And I still cry watching it. Yeah. I can't watch. Well, you gotta tell Ty so Pennington, great. he has the best job on TV. He's got some big fans over oh, here. It's a great job. You can catch Extreme Makeover Home Edition Sunday nights mm -hmm. on, on ABC. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, you could <laughs> probably pick any, of course you could, charitable organization to affiliate with. You could do so much good for anybody. Why did you pick the Children's Miracle Network? You know, um, the Children's Miracle Network is such an amazing organization. They've been around for a really long time. And um, just to, I've visited several children's hospitals and to see those kids and what they go through and what their parents go through. And um, just to take just a little bit of time out of my day or maybe a week a year to visit these kids, um, it means everything to them and it changes my life. And um, you know, Seaman gives all the, the money to, all the money that's raised in their community all goes to the, the local children's hospital, which I think is so important. Yes. And um, it really does help these kids and, and change their lives. You were reading a book in the, the, uh, the tape we just saw. Yes. I, think, I think this was, was the book. What, what is the story and what is the story behind the story? Well, Jag um, is a series of books that my husband and I came up with. One day we came up with, um, it's kind of a funny story. We had um, we were driving around uh, L.A. and decided, hey, we're both writers. It'd be so cool to just write a children's book to read to our kids one day. And three days later, I got a call, and they, someone asked me if I wanted, was interested in doing a children's book out of the blue. And uh, it just kind of fell into my lap. And, and the stories are really kind of based on my life and my experiences that I, grew, you know, the hardships I went through as a kid. And it's kind of, it's basically aged to uh, geared to ages four to eight, and it's really about honesty. The J Jag's new friend is the second book that's just came out, and it's about honesty and communication, and really just um, being accountable for your actions. Uh, Leanne has a gift for everybody who is here in the studio mm -hmm. with us: a copy of <laughs> Jag's new friend. Our uh, final thing: you had asked uh, that we talk about. Uh, 
eczema awareness. What it why? Well, um, October is Eczema Awareness Month, mm -hmm. and um, I have I was diagnosed with eczema when I was two years old, mm -hmm. and um, it has been a lifelong battle for me, and still is. I was I was covered on 80% uh, of my body by the time I was six, oh. and so um, it's been a tough battle for my parents and myself. And um, I'm just here to kind of to really just encourage people to go and get help, and that they go to a doctor, find a great doctor, and get good treatment. For more information on everything Leanne is involved in, you can uh, log on to our website, the Jane Paul. Show.com. Leanne in a moment sings a song that is definitely going to bring me to tears. Next. Well, before we go, an early Christmas present. Everyone here is going home as well with a copy of Leanne's new Christmas CD. What a wonderful world, and what's even better, Leanne is going to sing us out with the title track, which I gotta tell you, is my father's favorite song. Oh. I see trees of green, red roses too. to myself what a wonderful world I see skies of blue clouds of white the bright blessed day the dark say goodnight and I think to myself what a wonderful world. the colors of the Thank you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.